What she's seen in Alabama is the fact that there are already people who are traveling six to eight hours just to come to her clinic in order to access care. That is what America looks like right now. And for many people, you can say that abortion is legal, but it is so inaccessible for them that it, they might as well be living in a place where they just are not having legal abortions. Um, so, can you take us through? You know, right now, people seem to be shocked by what has now just happened this onslaught of fierce anti choice uh, bans, abortion bans around the country. But you have shown uh, in Handbook for a Post Row America and all your work at Rewire and other places um, that the groundwork has been laid for years. Yes. Um, obviously, ever since the beginning of Roe being decided, the anti-abortion movement has always been trying to overturn it. But it got very enthusiastic about it just after the 2010 election, when they were able to sweep a number of states and make them Republican strongholds. And through that, they were able to pass a number of model legislations that came through places like Americans United for Life, National Right to Life Committee. And these bills were all very small, incremental steps that were meant to try and take a challenge up to the Supreme Court to let them review Roe v. Wade. Back in 2011, we were seeing more things that were like 20-week abortion bans or extending waiting periods to 48 or 72 hours, very incremental changes, because at that point, the anti-abortion movement wasn't sure whether or not the court would actually overturn Roe. And so they just wanted to make small changes so that they didn't accidentally set off a case that would make a precedent that would make Roe stronger. That all changed after 2016. Once there were more appointments to the Supreme Court, and especially once Kavanaugh, Justice Kavanaugh um, replaced Justice Anthony Kennedy, who was considered the swing vote, then it was all, all systems go. No longer were people worried that they might accidentally uphold Roe. And that's why we have this new onslaught of heartbeat bans, of total abortion bans, and things that are very obviously unconstitutional. These these bills were all being introduced back in 2011, 2012, 2013. It's just that they were not passing, because at that time, they were being opposed by anti-abortion activists themselves as well. Now, anti-abortion activists are the ones who are enthusiastically supporting heartbeat bans or supporting total abortion bans. And that's how things have switched over the last 10 years. Talk about states where abortion is effectively banned, um, or will be soon. Like, um, talk about the legislation Missouri just passed. Um, um, yes. So Missouri is in the process of passing their own heartbeat ban. It's very slightly different from the other ones that we've seen, in that it has an extra two-week window on it. So the idea is that abortion may not be banned until about eight weeks after last menstrual period, so that would be about four weeks after a person would realize that they were pregnant. However, in Missouri, that's really not an additional window, because Missouri only has one abortion clinic in the entire state, and that is in St. Louis. In Missouri, it's also a 72-hour wait in between visiting the clinic the first time and then visiting the clinic the second time. You have to wait 72 hours in between, and often, because of the way that abortions are scheduled, you will end up waiting a week in between your first appointment and your second appointment. On top of that, you have the wait that you would need to actually be able to access an abortion appointment in the first place. When you add these layers upon layers of roadblocks, then you've made abortion significantly impossible to obtain, and so you've effectively outlawed it within that state, even though technically Roe is still intact and abortion is still legal.